Hello, and welcome back to Sinister Sisters. Hello. Today we have our special Christmas episode for Ooh. True Crime Tuesday. It is neither Holly nor Jolly. We're talking about murder. Have a Holly <laughs> Jolly. Murder. Murder. But not. Because that's gross. Don't do the murders. That's illegal. It is. We are going to discuss today the murder of the Lawson family, which was committed on Christmas Day in 1929. Okay. Have you heard of this case before? I don't think so. But also, it's ringing a tiny bell. Just a, jingle bells. a wee little jangle jingle in there. So, like, maybe I've heard about it in passing. Okay. Before we get into that, though, this is Sinister Sisters. I personally am shrimp, and I tell you true crime stories every Tuesday, which is what we're doing today. This is Kat. She... What, who are you? I personally am Kat. I talk about a variety of things, often slightly lighter than these true crime episodes, but not always. Controversial things happening in the world, news, etc, etc. That's on Sunday. On Sunday. With Soapbox on. Sunday. Soapbox Sunday. Yes, because there's no consistent theme. I just get on my soapbox and talk. So The consistent theme is alliteration. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so follow us on Instagram at sinistersisters.podcast. Follow us on TikTok at Sinister Sisters Podcast. Follow us on YouTube at Sinister Sisters mm -hmm. Podcast. And follow us on... Oh no, sorry. Email us <laughs> at SinisterSistersPod at gmail.com. You can yes. also find case request forms in various places, including the video description, the episode description, and the Instagram bio. And we have received a few case requests through there. So thank you so much to those people who have done that. And we will get to those as soon as we can. ASAP Rocky. ASAP Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the content warnings, excuse me, for today's episode are family annihilation, suicide, and mentions of sexual abuse. Okay. Um, okay, so in 1911, Charles Lawson married Fanny Marning, with whom he had eight children. The third, William, was born in 1914 and died of an illness in 1920. Mm -hmm. In 1918, following the move of his younger brothers, Marion and Elijah, to the Germantown area, Charles followed suit with his family. The Lawsons worked as tobacco farmers saving enough money by 1927 to buy their own farm on Brook Cove Road. Wow. So they were tobacco farmers, which is <laughs> pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. In 1929, just a few days prior to Christmas, Charles Lawson, who was aged 43 at the time, took Fanny, who was 37, and their seven children, Marie, aged 17, Arthur, aged 16, Carrie, aged 12, Maybell, aged 7, James, aged 4, Raymond, aged 2, and Mary Lou, aged 4 months, into town to buy new clothes and to have a family portrait taken. This would have been an unusual occurrence for a working-class rural family of the era, which has led to speculations that Lawson's act was premeditated. Foreshadowing. Oh. Posthumously, hmm. it was speculated that he had also impregnated had impregnated his eldest daughter, who was Marie, who was 17. Mm. However, Lawson having purchased his own farm two years previously, and coupled with the fact that a wire that was sent out after the murders happened, characterized Lawson as a well-to-do farmer, a pre-Christmas shopping spree could have been reasonable for them, budget-wise. Okay. Like, maybe they just had a good year, and so he kind of, like, decided to treat them? Yes. Okay. It could have been a thing. It also might could have not, not have been a thing. Been a thing. <laughs> it could have been, like, 
nothing sus. It could have been yeah. everything sus. We don't really know because it was the 1900s. Got gotcha. the 1930s, basically. So we don't know. But what we do know is that on the afternoon of December 25th, Charles Lawson shot his daughters, Carrie and Maybell, as they were setting out to visit their aunt and uncle's house. He waited for them by the tobacco barn until they were in range and shot them with a 12-gauge shotgun, then ensured that they were dead by bludgeoning them. He placed the bodies in the tobacco barn. Afterwards, Lawson returned to the house and shot Fanny, who was on the porch. As soon as the gun was fired, Marie, who was inside, screamed, while the two small boys, James and Raymond, attempted to find a hiding place. Lawson shot Marie and then found and killed the two boys. Mm-hmm. Lastly, he killed the baby Mary Lou, and it is thought that she was bludgeoned to death. After the murders, he went into the nearby woods and, several hours later, shot himself. The only survivor was his eldest son, 16-year-old Arthur, whom had been sent on an errand just before committing the crime. Just before oh, wow. the crime was committed. Yes, Charlie himself sent Arthur on an errand just before killing everyone else interesting Mm -hmm. the bodies of the family members were found with their arms crossed and with rocks under their heads the gunshot signaling so that kind of shows like remorse that they were Uh... rocks as pillows maybe and then their arms crossed like they were sleeping interesting okay Mm mm-hmm The gunshot signaling Lawson's own suicide was heard by the many people who had already learned of the murders on the property and had gathered there. So it was a few hours after the murders Uh. that Charlie killed himself. And so everyone was there, vibing, and they heard that they heard him shoot himself, basically. Hmm. A police officer who was with Arthur ran down to discover Lawson's body along with letters to his parents. As footprints encircled the tree, it was supposed that he had been pacing around the tree prior to taking his life. Okay. So, some theories on Hmm. motive. Months before the event, Lawson had sustained a head injury, and some family and friends theorized that it had altered his mental state and it was related to the massacre. However, an autopsy and analysis of his brain at Johns Hopkins Hospital found no abnormalities. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah. There was a book published in 1990 called White Christmas, Bloody Christmas that made the claim that Charlie was sexually abusing Marie, um, Mm. which began with an anonymous source who heard a rumor during a tour of the Lawson home shortly after the murders. The day before the book was to be published, the author received a phone call from Stella Lawson, a relative who had already been interviewed for the book. Yeah. Stella said that she had overheard Fanny's sisters, in-laws, and aunts, including Stella's own mother, Jetty Lawson, discussing how Fanny had confided in them that she had been concerned about an incestuous relationship between Charlie and Marie. Jetty oh, no. died in early 1928, meaning Fanny had been suspicious of the incest at least that long before the murders in late 1929. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. More support for this theory was revealed in The Meaning of Our Tears, which was published by the same author as Mm -hmm. White Christmas, Bloody Christmas, um, in 2006. A close friend of Marie Lawson's, Ella May, came forward and disclosed that a few weeks before Christmas in 1929, Marie confided in her that she was pregnant by her own father and that both he and Fanny knew about this. Another close friend and neighbour of the Lawson family, Hill Hampton, stated that he knew of serious problems going on within the family, but declined to elaborate. Okay. Yeah. The home is now a tourist attraction and you can go on tours there and the Christmas cake that Fanny was making is still there and it had to be put into a glass casing because it was a fruitcake and people were picking raisins off the fruitcake as like a souvenir. Mm. 
I don't know how I feel about that. That seems very... Like, obviously, I understand the interest in true crime. Yeah. Obviously. But it seems, like, kind of bordering on sensationalizing or, like, romanticizing almost to have it then set up as a tourist attraction. Yes. However, um, it was made into a tourist attraction by a family member. One of Charlie's sisters, I believe. Okay. I mean, I suppose if you so, did it in the right way, it could be as like a like a memorial or like a like drawing attention to you know, like family annihilation. I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but yeah, a lot of houses have not maybe not officially, but become tourist attractions with crime that's true yeah that's true speaking of family annihilators chris watts his house just sold the house that he murdered his family and just sold to yeah. a new family and they have had to ask people to stop going and taking pictures of it so yeah yeah hmm. i don't know but anyways that is our short episode today. That's all I have. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting Christmas. story. Yeah. yeah, it would be nice to know like what the tea actually was. Mm -hmm. You know, because it was like the 1930s. We don't really actually know very much about what was going on. Yeah, like we yeah. don't. There's no like records of their banking transactions, and there's no mm. records of like hospital stays or anything like that after yeah. his head injury and. We don't, they weren't like, I'm going to say famous until this happened. So there was no like, right. Yeah. They were just like about normal them. people. Yeah. They would just live in their life and then they, this happened and then now there's like interest in them, but there's no like social media from the 1930s to go and look at what they were doing, you know? Damn it. Zuck. <laughs> Build a time machine. Yeah. Go back to on the dawn of time i mean and have honestly, face rock he probably could that man is not a human <laughs> he is absolutely a robot or ai or something yeah this other podcast that i've mentioned now probably like a million times called the judges <laughs> they did a segment once where it was like evil like superhero villain or billionaire and they like read quotes from oh no from like elon zuck like um steve jobs whatever all these like very wealthy people and then had the other people guess if they were like the or they also included like superhero super villain quotes too and they had yeah. to guess if it was a billionaire who said it or <laughs> very <laughs> Very poignant. <laughs> yes. Anyways, that's that's the tea on the Lawson family. Actually, when I googled, I knew I wanted to do like a Christmas themed murder. Yeah. So when I murdered like Christmas, when sorry, pardon. <laughs> <laughs> so when I googled, <laughs> when I. Googled <laughs> Christmas Day murders, and there was like a bunch of ones that came up. Like, yeah, do you think this is how Jesus wanted us to celebrate his birthday? <laughs> I don't. Well, Christmas is a really stressful time of the year. I think the suicide rate also goes up around this time of the year, just in general. So, Aww. yeah, it's um because it's supposed to be this like. Oh, we're so joyful and happy and everything's beautiful. But for, you know, a lot of people, it's not. There's a yeah. lot of expectations on spending and... Seeing spend, family. Uh, seeing family, yeah, which all like, triggers two people. Yeah. Especially, I think, people with young kids, like, who get presents from Santa and, and stuff. Yeah. Because, like, rich parents sometimes will give, like, the big gifts from Santa... So then the kid has to be like, well, why doesn't Santa yeah, love like me, me as, as much? much. Yeah. yeah. 
So yeah, that yeah. makes sense. I mean, it, Have... don't murder people. Don't murder people. But you know, don't. Yeah, the iPad can come from mum and dad, or mum and mum, or dad and dad, or whatever parent and combination. Parent. Yeah. yeah. The socks and the chocolate and the mm-hmm. toothbrush can come from Santa. Yeah. And family doesn't have to be blood. If your blood family is yeah. not accepting of you or not yep. nice to you or your partner or somebody, then you can create your own family. This has turned into like a <laughs> therapy session. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> We hope you, you catch- have a holy jolly Christmas. Indeed. And, and you we'll can actually catch us back be here on Sunday, we which is actually Christmas here. Day. Um, and we will be telling some fun Christmassy themed stories. So if you are with family or people who, you know, you're not really vibing with, you can come here. You can listen to us tell some funny, funny stories from Reddit and hang out with us for, you know, half an hour or so. Yeah. We accept you for who you are and what you have brought to the table. Yeah. Unless you're a serial killer, then. And then maybe turn yourself into your local police station. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. (laughs) Bye. Bye.